Guys, what's up? Tony from the Outsider Channel here with you once again today. And today I've got a little bit of a different style video for you. Yeah, today is more about my progression in jumping as a grandpa. No, I'm not a grandpa yet. I don't think I'll ever be. But yeah, I'm in my early 40s and I want to help you guys just with the mind state of basically what helped me get into the brain of accomplishing the next phase in my skill progression. Because a lot of people get turned off by like, I'm too old for that, let's leave it to the kids. There's been so many comments and videos of me at bike parks jumping and doing this and that and people not really knowing how old I am. And just saying like, I'm gonna leave that for the kids. No, you don't have to limit yourself to skill progression and this is just an example of that through jumping to have fun on your mountain bike and this video is not just about me being older and learning to jump these are things that help me in the overall bigger scope of things in my mind state to learn to progress my skills and to jump so if you don't like one of the tips stick around because the next one is going to definitely be about you so i highly suggest you staying to the end and taking it all in because I've been through the gamut and I have something to offer for you guys. I'm gonna get comfortable, have a seat. Let's get to the video. All right, number one, and this is the reason I personally made this video and the reason you might have clicked on it. Don't let age get in the way of your skill progression or specifically in this video, jumping. If you feel like you wanna progress, if you feel like you're in shape enough, society hasn't broken you down to tell you leave it to the kids, Tony. Nobody said you could play through. He's not even a member. Look at the way he's dressed for Christ. Would you get off my golf course? Yes. Go back the way you came. Fine. And now you're gonna die wearing that stupid little hat. If you are feeling good on your bike and you feel like your skills are at a point where you're ready to take it at that next level, then just do it. Don't let people mentally break you down and tell you you can't. Don't let outside sources or voices in your head ruin that for you. And this doesn't just go for 40, you know, late 20s, 30s, wherever your head's at, wherever you feel like you're getting older and you need to calm down. If that's what you wanna do, go for it. But if you don't want to, don't let that number in your head get in the way. That one was easy. Let's move on to the stuff that's universal for everybody. Number two. This one may seem obvious and more common sense based, but a lot of people don't recognize this and stick by it. Start small. You see the big jump at the bike park. It looks intimidating. You see your buddy doing it. I'm gonna try it too. You blast down the hill and hit that thing and just think you can hold on, but no, you're going over the bars. You're not gonna go skydiving for the first time with your buddy and just jump out of the plane. Start small. There's no shame in starting on tiny jumps. Flow trails are a great place to start. Get used to the transitions. Get used to pumping in and out of those transitions. Start lifting up at the top of those rollers and seeing what it feels like to go airborne for the first time. Even if it's a few inches, just get the feel of it going. Your body needs to adjust to something new. You gotta start somewhere. So start in a safe place, a comfortable place. Because the other side of this too, and what a lot of people do, is they start here when they should start here they crash or it just feels completely abnormal and they'd never do it again. You already gave yourself a terrible first impression. So don't go here, start here. You'll eventually get here if you like it. Number three. And this one might be a little bit weird for some people, but you have to do it with anything, right? Except some kind of risk. Okay, let's jump this jump. You're already out there on the bike, right? So you're a little bit adjusted to this mind state, but when you go and you push your skills and you're trying something new, you accept some type of risk. And with jumping, obviously you have to do it a little bit more than you're used to. You're gonna be pushing your limits at first, right? You're gonna be going off this jump that the horizon looks scary as hell because you can't see the other side a lot of the time, right? It's just gonna look like a wall. But if you start small and build up to it, your confidence is gonna be there to know if you can't see it, what's coming on the other side. Feeling pretty good. You're probably gonna crash here and there. And for me sometimes, those are okay. What crashes can do and a lot of people don't talk about is give you a little bit more confidence in the realm of, hey, that wasn't so bad. Damn, dude. I got back up, dusted myself off, and I tried it again. <laughs> It's not always a crash because that word just seems so daunting, right? Crash, we think car crash, plane crash, bike crash. They can be gnarly, don't get me wrong, and I've had them. But you're not gonna just get right up. But most of the time, your bike just moves over there, you get a scratch on it, you get a little cut, a little boo-boo, 
and you get back up on the bike and you turn around and you try it again. You learn something from that crash, right? What did I do wrong? Did I go too fast? Did I go too slow? Did I lean forward? It's all about taking that knowledge and that bike feel and turning it into something and shaping it into something that works for you. So yeah, you're gonna be scared, you're gonna be nervous, you're gonna have the nerves going, but accept it. You need that learning experience and you need that to take it to the next level. Number four, it's not number eight. I don't know if we have eight. And this is something you guys probably already do on YouTube because you're watching my video. You watch mountain bike videos, how-to videos are a huge, huge help. And this is something that helped give me confidence and knowledge going into something that I hadn't tried. GMBN is a great source of that. A lot of you guys are probably already subscribed, but they have a massive library of how to do everything. Researching and kind of being a little bit obsessive with watching how-tos and rewinding and looking at body position is a great tool to use. Not only how-tos, so watch mountain bike videos, period. Not just POV stuff, like the stuff I usually do, but like buy some mountain bike videos, like Teton Gravity just came out with one. Return to Earth is one that I love to watch. Same way I used to watch skateboard videos when I was a kid. This is getting me pumped and motivated to go skate. I do the same thing now with mountain bike videos. Great music, amazing filming, and you get to see precision detailed body position on how they're doing those tricks. Where their posture is, how are they leaning on the bike? Where do they see themselves naturally? in something that they've been practicing for like their entire lives. Steal a little bit of information from that in a fun way that gets you pumped to ride, motivated to ride. It's a problem of motivation, all right? And you can learn something from just by paying attention. Be smart, watch videos. Number five, location, location, location. Yes, find somewhere you are comfortable with and you can go back to so that you can have your progression based on the last time you were there. Put some time into the trail, put some time into the bike park. You're gonna be intimidated at first, but if you go back and you ride and you progress on that trail over and over again, your brain's just gonna understand how it works. It's gonna feel more comfortable with it. You're gonna know what to expect. And you're gonna be able to establish a line in the sand where you top out at and that's the barrier you wanna break past. So that line might be here where you're casing jumps. You just wanna ride up, land flat on top. Just get used to that transition and that lip. That's gonna be your comfort zone. You get used to it, you do it a bunch of times. No shame in casing at first. Everybody that learns how to jump is casing jumps in the beginning. Don't let them fool you. The cool guys at the bike park that are blasting 360s all started somewhere. <laughs> All I need are some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. So for me, an example of this is Sky Park. I had never ridden a bike jump before going to Sky Park. What I did is start out with Sleigh Ride, the flow trail, got used to those. Slowly, I started to see myself getting air, felt more comfortable, and I took that up to Arrow. They got some small jumps at the top, started feeling more comfortable on those small ones, and over time, I moved up to the jump line. That took some time though. I think I rode Sky Park for six months until I even dropped in on jump line properly. Yeah, I dropped in and rolled it just to see what it looked like. I knew it was above my pay grade, right? But you start somewhere and that progression is a slow build. Take your time. Don't put yourself in positions that you're not ready for. But when you know you're ready to go, that leads us up into number six, commit. Commit to what you are doing. This is more of an advanced mind state. This is something that when you are getting to the point where you're actually going to hit jumps and there's consequences or they're bigger or uh, there might not be a table on top. There might not be a flat part on top. And not only for jumps, this is gonna take you into the mind state for features on the trail, stuff you haven't hit before, right? If you're going to drop in and you're looking to clear that jump, you need to take in that philosophy where you're gonna see yourself over it. The worst thing you can do is drop in full speed and then two seconds before, pull back, freak out, and get weird. You're just gonna be in the air, tacoing around like a crazy person. Don't do that. If you commit to what you're doing 
and things go a little wrong in there, at least you're on the trajectory that you should be and it's gonna be a safer one instead of flailing around. Once you get past the point of no return, guys, just stick with it because I guarantee you're gonna come out much better than you thought in a half the time you're gonna land that jump and just think. It's I hope I've given you some tools that helps you gain some confidence out on the trail and take your skill progression to the next level because learning things and progressing is scary. But if you think through them in a positive, systematic way, it doesn't have to be. Don't look at the huge, big pie, right? You're just gonna have a slice of it at first. Eventually, you'll finish all of it and you'll wanna buy a new one. Does that work? It kinda works, right? Start with the slice, you'll finish the pie eventually. Guys, thanks so much. I'm Tony from the Outsider Channel. New videos every week. Like, subscribe, join me on Patreon where all your dreams come true. And with that, I'll see you next week.